will go now for question paper discussion on prism and optical instruments okay the same syllabus uh, you have for tomorrow's exam so we'll start now the question paper discussion right done okay so now here the first question the maximum refractive index of a prism which permits the passage of light through it when the refracting angle of the prism is they given already refracting angle of the prism 90 degree what they are asking here so the prism will pass through this is prism prism will pass through light prism will pass through light they are asking what should be maximum refractive index what should be maximum refractive index so that prism will pass through independent of whatever may be the angle of incidence whatever may be the angle of incidence whatever may be the angle of incidence the light ray should pass through the prism so in that way what should be the relation between angle of prism this is what you can say angle of prism and critical angle what should be the relation between okay they are asking actually maximum refractive index now we will go for it see here we already learned the ray will not at all travel through if for example let me tell you if the ray goes like that it will hit here other surface and it will go for tir whatever may be the angle of incidence it will always go for tir at the other surface if angle of prism is greater than 2c that is c is critical angle so this is the condition already you learnt in the class angle of prism should be i mean this angle angle of prism should be always greater than twice the critical angle this is the condition for always tir at the other surface at this surface always tir right but got my point okay so always tir takes place now with this i'll go with this is a formula for always always tir always tir tir at this surface at the surface say ab always tir so condition for that is a is greater than 2c now i'll go with that so a is greater than 2c this is a condition for not pass through always tir it will not pass through the prism so can i write here a by 2 is greater than c so i'll take sin both sides sin of a by 2 is greater than what sin of c then here what sin of a by 2 c is greater than what is sin c here it will be reciprocal of refractive index it will be re reciprocal of refractive index now you take this mu this side i'll take mu this side mu will be what greater than take sin that side if sin goes that it will be reciprocal of sin can i take here cosec cosec a by 2 so for always the tir mu should be greater than cosec a by 2 right or not so to pass through always definitely mu should be either equal to that or less than this this is a condition for mu is greater than cosec a by 2 is a condition for always tir so if mu is equal to cosec a by 2 then definitely the ray start to go that side mu is less than cosec a by 2 definitely pass through then what is the maximum value of mu so it is there cosec a by 2 is there then what is the maximum value so maximum value will be so the maximum value will be i can write here so mu maximum mu maximum will be equal to cosec cosec a what is the angle of prism they have already given here 90 degree 90 degree divided by 2 right or not therefore mu maximum equal to cosec 90 by 2 is 45 cosec 45 will be what it will be root 2 so what is the maximum value of refractive index so that ray always pass through it is independent of angle of incidence whatever may be angle of incidence at the surface ac so it will always pass through for the maximum value of refractive index must be root 2 got my point hopefully here the answer for this will be what this is what root 2 will be answer got my point okay now let me move on to the next one okay see here now next one okay so here okay see here. now one more thing before i uh, go forward so telescope part will not be there for tomorrow's exam 
So compound microscope and simple microscope. In addition to that, prism will be there. So I'll exclude whatever uh, discussion paper given to you. From that uh, discussion paper, I'll not going for a telescope questions. So excluding that telescope part, I'm going compound microscope, simple microscope, and prism. So in that way only, I have chosen the questions from your discussion paper as well as some additional questions also I have taken. Got my point? Right. We'll move on now. See you. So uh, now it is desired to make a converging achromatic combination of mean focal length 50 centimeter. Okay, here desired to make converging achromatic combination. Now let me tell you some uh, brief in that. So if you use your convex lens, single convex lens or single concave lens, then what will happen if a white light passes through it? If a, if, sub, if a white light passes through it, suppose it's a principal axis, white light passes through it. So here, there will be what? So violet will converge very close to optic center and then red will converge far away from optic center. It means focal length is different for different wavelength. We have already learnt 1 by f physicals to mu minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. You have already learnt it. So if focal length is inversely proportional to mu. So focal length 1 by f is inversely proportional to mu. No. Likewise, so this is even you can say when mu is inversely proportional to lambda. So focal length is what? Directly proportional to wave, you know wavelength. So red has got higher focal length, then violet has got lower focal length, like that. So if white light coming from an object, you will get the colored image like that. So seven colored, like colored image you will get. There is no single spot image you will get, colored image you will get. This is problem we say it is a chromatic aberration. So colored image for white polychrome, I mean for white light, what we get? Colored image we get. So this is called poly, you know, chromatic aberration. It's a defect of single lens. To overcome this, we'll go for achromatic combination. We'll go for achromatic combination. Got my point? So for that achromatic combination, what actually is being done? Convex lens is being joined with, convex lens is being joined with suitable concave lens. Actually, convex lens will make this type of uh, different focal length and concave lens will make again uh, opposite to that. Actually, convex lens will converge towards the principal axis. Concave lens will diverge away from the... So, for suitable value of refractive index of that... Uh, move on here. Okay. See here. They are very clear. Let me read first one question this. It is desired to make a converging achromatic. Achromatic. They are given here. Desire to make an achromatic combination of mean focal length. What is the effective focal length combination they are given? 50. Using two lenses of material A, this is a material A and this is a material B, right or not? If the dispersive power of A and B are given in the ratio, dispersive power of A and let me say omega 1 and omega 2 are the dispersive power of A and B, they are given already in the ratio of 1 by 2. So the focal lengths of the convex lens and the concave lens are respectively. They are asking the focal length of convex, focal length of convex as well as they are asking focal length of concave. Got my point? Okay. Now we, we want here, there is no dispersion. Like, like that dispersion we don't want. This is called a problem. So for that, let me go now here. To not to have like that dispersion, there is a formula. So I would like to go direct formula here. What is the formula? So it will be omega 1 by f1 plus omega 2 by f2 should be 0. This is the condition for achromatic combination. This is a condition for achromatic combination. Okay. This formula probably we have done it in the class. If not, just you go with this formula in case of achromatic combination. So omega 1 by f1 is equals to minus omega 2 divided by f2. You can use this if if uh, that uh, violet to red, that, that different spots of focal length will not be there. Single spot of white color will be there. To have that, so this formula, like a chromatic combination, like colored images will not get. So actually, why, why this question has been taken? So this has been used in the microscope. So like if I, suppose you are using uh, uh, any object which is producing polychromatic light. At that time, to have an image at one plane, I'll go for achromatic combination in the microscope. 
that's the reason this question has been taken so let me move on the achromatic combination so we'll use here omega 1 divided by omega 2 bring here it will be what minus f1 divided by f2 they are given omega 1 by omega 2 will be what it will be 2 1 by 2 right or not 1 by 2 is it okay 1 by 2 so with that okay so what will be here uh, my f1 value what should be f2 value bring it here f2 is it f2 equals to minus 2 f1 right or not f2 equals to minus 2 f1 now now i'll go for now i'll go for so here the combination of lenses is there no let me use the formula effective focal length is equals to effective focal length is equals to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 so they are given effective focal length how much effective focal length probably i somewhere here we have written what is the effective focal length is given here what is the effective focal length is given here they are given your effective mean focal length is 50 hope you got it mean focal length here is 50 okay so mean focal length value i'll take here 1 by 50 is equals to 1 by f1 1 by f1 then here f2 value i done it here so it will be 1 by 2 f1 so take here f1 common 1 by f1 if i take common what will get here 1 minus 1 by 2 so it will be what 1 by 50 is equals to 1 by f1 can you cross multiply 2 minus 1 1 by is it 1 by 2 so 2 ones are and then 2 25 is then what is the f1 value it is 25 what is the f1 value it is 25 then can you substitute here f1 then it will be what minus 2 times 25 equals to what minus 50 so here second lens will be converging so we'll get minus here what is the answer here minus 50 and 25 so which answer will be correct here so it will be so which option is correct here so 25 for first one then 50 for the second one got this okay now let me move on now okay here okay now see third question sorry this okay in your main discussion paper it will be sixth one see the magnifying power the magnifying power of a microscope with objective magnifying power of a microscope with objective 5 mm focal length what is the focal length of objective given focal length of objective given is 5 mm right or not can i write it in centimeter it will be 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 into what like uh, just in the, if you go like that what should be the focal length of objective it is 0.5 cm okay now so magnifying power of a microscope with objective of 5 mm focal length is 400 what is the magnifying power of that for microscope it is 400 it means it will make size of an you know image 400 times bigger than size of the object 400 done okay now so then later what is given the length of its tube is what is the length of the tube given length of the tube is what given here what 20 cm length of the tube is 20 then the focal length of the eye piece what they are asking here they are asking here focal length of eye piece right or not okay so you know formula for magnifying for magnifying power formula for, for microscope when image is formed at least distance and when image is formed at infinity but here nothing is given we have to go with nothing is they are not said anything like final image is formed at uh, uh, like least distance of distinct vision or infinity at that time what you have to do you should take infinite final image formed at infinite distance okay with that i could go a formula what is the magnifying power formula if the final image is formed at infinity it will be what length divided by focal length of objective and d divided by focal length of ips you know it already got this one. what is the m value they are given it is 400 is equals to length of the tube is given how much it will be 20 here so focal length of objective given it is 0.5 here so into capital d is you know it is a standard will nothing is given will go standard value then focal length of ips got my point so it will be like 20 and this it is it is what so it will be like that we can cancel it out then fe if you calculate it it comes out to be uh, it will be 2.5 cm can you calculate this okay so what is the focal length of ipcs comes out to be 2.5 so i'll go with this answer 
done okay now go to the next one okay okay see here next one in the next one in a compound microscope the objective f0 and if piece fe are placed at a distance l right or not so are placed at a distance such that l equals to okay then very clearly they have given here in case of microscope so convex like objective focal length will be taken less relatively and uh, you know the another aperture of the eyepiece will be taken high right or not okay now somewhere here it's a focal it's a focus of objective objective is kept very close to focus then where would be image here somewhere here it will be f not somewhere it will be 2f not if object is behind f not then image will be somewhere here this will be image here then very clearly actually what is length here length is what this l is what separation between the two lens is this l now here to here focal length of objective this is a focal length of objective very clearly l is very very greater than f not what is it? what is l here separation between the two lens am i right or not and even compared to you know actually somewhere this this image is we have adjusted the island such that the image comes between focus of eyepiece and then so optic center of even somewhere this uv uv that is object distance for eyepiece even somewhere this uv is also very very less than l so definitely i could say i could say this l is much greater than f not so even it is much greater than so uv what is uv is very nearly you can say uv as what very nearly it is f e got my point because this image is very close but inside the focal length of eyepiece but very close to focus of eyepiece so that's the reason i'll go with third option much greater than f not or f e so it will be third option got my point done okay next so next one okay see here see here. now next one so here the the length of compound microscope is given what is the length of compound microscope is given let me say it is 14 cm the magnifying power of a relaxed eye relaxed eye means what definitely here image will be at infinity magnifying power of relaxed eye is given what 25 it means the image will be 25 times bigger than the object right or not if the focal length of eye lens is they are given focal length of eye lens is what it will be 5 cm right then the object distance for objective will be they are asking here what object distance for objective will be okay now so in this case very clearly given so image is formed at where infinity it means just roughly let me draw a ray diagram here ray diagram here see here so it will be what again objective here somewhere it will be what it will be eye lens here so very clearly if suppose somewhere here object is kept this an object where the image is forming where the image so that image will be at the focus of what eyepiece that image will be here because they told here relaxed eye they told no then definitely this image will be focus of eyepiece got my point okay now definitely so can i take this as like let me say this is v not that is image distance of this eyepiece am i right okay now this will be what can i take this is what object distance for eyepiece got my point now what should be this length okay now let me take the length of the tube is what length of the tube length of the tube can i say it is v not v not so here this is what we can say this is what it's a length of the tube length of the tube so can i say length of the tube is u not v not plus object distance for uh, eyepiece got my point so this plus this will be what l now they have given already l what is l value given it's a 14 cm v not plus what is the okay now what you have to approximate here is so it's not approximate directly let me take here where this uh, you know this is acting like a object for the eyepiece so it's exactly at the focus then definitely uv will be equals to what definitely uv is equals to what focal length of eyepiece only so let me write here focal length of eyepiece only therefore 
is equals to V naught plus focal length of his I is given what? IPC is given what? 5. Therefore, V naught will be what? Is equals to 14 minus 5. So, V naught will be equals to what? 9 centimeter. We have got V naught. Done? Okay. Now, let me have an uh, for relaxed eye purpose. What is the formula for magnification? For relaxed eye purpose, for magnification formula will be what? For compound microscope, it will be the another way like if I remove the approximation directly, if I take V naught, can I write here directly like uh, this is F naught, can I write here F naught nearly? So, it will be what? D divided by F E. Got my point? For relaxed eye. So, what is V naught we have got here? So, M is also we have got 25. What is M value? 25. So, what is V naught value? 9 here. What is the focal length of objective? Did they give focal length of, that's what we are asked to find. Okay. D value, let me take 25. And then what is the focal length of eyepiece? It's 5 centimeter. Now, everything we got it here. Hopefully, I know everything you have got it here. So, this will be done. Cancels it out. Then what is the F naught here? What is F naught? What is F naught here? What will be F naught? So, F naught will be equals to, it's 9 by 5. Right or not? So, hopefully, it will be 9 on the 9. Okay, 9 eights are. Then which is answer here? So, it will be answer. First option. Got my point? Okay. So, the first option will be correct one. So, this is correct. Right? Okay. This is correct. Got my point? So, this will be done. So, this is the focal length of objective lens. Okay. Now, okay. Next one. Done? Okay. Now, okay. So here next one, let me go here, see here. In this case, the refractive index of the material of the prism is given how much? Root 2. Let me write it. Refractive index of material of the prism is given root 2. And the angle of prism is given what? Angle of prism. Angle of prism is given what? 30 degree. 30 degree. One of its refracting faces is polished. Okay. Let me see here. This is the prism, prism, one of its face is polished, no, like that, one of its face is polished, they told here, the incident beam of light, this let me make it here light, incident beam of light, incident beam of light will retrace back, of uh, re retrace back for angle of incident, they are asking for what angle of incidence in the, on the first surface, so that light ray, will reflect back and retrace its path for what angle of incidence they are asking. Okay, now see here. So, the ray, this is the ray. Okay, some angle of incidence. Let me take this is the angle of, this is the angle of incidence. The ray will go here. Let me draw a bit bigger. Okay. Now, so what should be angle of incidence for which the light ray will retrace they are asking. Okay. Now, this is the prism. The one for surface here, it is polished here. So, the ray will come here. This is the angle of incidence. This is the angle of incidence. After refraction, the ray will go. They told here, it is retracing. If it has to retrace its path, it has to retrace its path. So, here definitely, this is, let me say, R1. And here, definitely R2, if it is... It has to retrace means here the angle of incidence should be zero, no? Because it has to hit the interface normally, then only it can retrace its path. Then R2 has to be what? Zero. Then R1, okay. And this is called what angle of prism? What is the relation between angle of prism and R1 and R2? Let me write here angle of prism is equals to R1 plus R2. So R2 is zero. They have given already angle of prism 30 degree. Therefore, R1 is equals to what? 30 degree. What is R1 value we have got here? 30 degree. So, can I apply Snell's law here? They given refractive index also. I and then R1, R1 I know it. Now, with Snell's law, can I find here with Snell's law here? Right? Okay. Now, can I apply Snell's law? Sin I, sin I is equals to, here what? It will be what? Sin of R1 into refractive index of that medium is root 2. So, sin I equals to, sin I equals to, what is R1 here? Sin R1. Sin 30 will be what? 1 by 2, it will be root 2. Is it 1 by root 2? 1 by root 2. Then, therefore, what should be I equals to? 45. 
So what is the angle of incidence where it will retrace its path? It will be what? 45 degree. Got? Done. Okay. Next one. Next one. Okay. See it. Now, the angular magnification of a simple microscope can be increased by increasing. It may be in simple microscope, it may be image formed at infinity or it may be image formed at least distance of distinct vision. In both the case, magnification is inversely proportional to fo focal length, focal length of the lens. So, focal length of lens, again it is inversely proportional to power of lens. Then, so magnifying power and this magnifying power and then power of a lens. So, what is there? They are directly proportional to each other then definitely i could say the angular magnification of a simple microscope can be increased by increasing the power so i'll go with the power of the lens if i increase then definitely magnifying power of the lens will also increases done okay next one okay go to the next one done Microscope is an optical instrument which enlarges the object. Remember, object can object size will truly remains the same. But what optical device does, instrument does is just using couple of lenses combination and all, it will it will increase the size of image. I mean, it will create higher angle at the eye. Like for example, if this is the object and this is the eye, this is the eye. And this object is making some angle at the eye. Let this angle be like that. If you use optical instrument or you may use any aid for enlarging the size of you know object. I mean, so using the optical device, we will make so at the image size, let me say a dash and b dash. So it will be become such that the angle subtended at the eye, this angle subtended at the eye becomes more. I mean. What actually when when a person can see if the angle subtended by an that object at the eye if it is more then I could say the eye can resolve or I can see a distinct and very clear image. What actually optical device does is it will increase the visual angle formed by object at the eye. It will increase the visual angle formed by object at the eye. Am I right or not? So object when I look through optical device. So it appears to be bigger and it will subtend bigger angle at the eye. Then comfortably we can see the image of that object. Got my point? So it will increase the visual angle. Done? So we will go with that. Very common and very clear it is. So it cannot increase the size of the object. I mean true it cannot be done. Right or not? The object will remain its own size. Okay. Now let me move on now. Right? Okay. Now see it. Next one. A compound microscope has two lenses. How many lenses? Actually, maybe many lenses are also possible. So for simplest principle, for simplest case, we go to go with two lenses. So compound microscope has two lenses. The magnifying power of the lens is 5. Magnifying power of one lens is what? Magnifying power of one lens is 5. And the combined magnifying power, combined magnifying power is given 100, combined magnifying power. One lens, let me say magnifying power of the objective, one lens, let me take it is 5, right or not? So magnifying power of the other. Remember, so total magnification is a product of magnification produced by each lens. We know formula, total magnifying power is equals to magnifying power of objective into magnifying power of eyepiece. We use this formula. Right or not? So, what is the magnifying total power is? So, it will be 100 and 1, 1 is given, it is a 5 and then other will be, we have to find it. So, it will be 5 ones of 5, 20 is a, therefore, what is the other magnification? It will be 20. So, magnification for others will be what? 20. So, I will go with this answer. Right? Okay. Next one. Okay. Okay. We will have another now. See the question here done okay see here. the objective lens of a compound microscope produces magnification of objective they are given 
objective lens of a compound microscope produces magnification of what 10 so it's a it's given for objective lens it is given how much 10 in order to get overall magnification of 100 right or not in order to get overall magnification of 100 i mean it's a effect due to both effect due to both you want to get 100 so what the, okay overall magnification of 100 when the image is formed at 25 it means the least distance of distinct vision from the eye the focal length of the eye lens will be what they are asking they are asking focal length of eye lens where the image is forming here at 25 then what is the formula for magnif magnification for compound microscope and the image is forming at least distance of distinct vision it will be what the formula for that will be what uh, it will be um, that that here we are using here uh, what is the formula v naught by i mean at the end uh, so it will be what let me use this formula m naught into m e i'll go with this formula so m naught let me return it what is the m e here m e you know second lens convex second lens will act like a simple microscope here second lens will act like a simple microscope here. what is the formula for simple microscope magnification d divided by f got my point so what is the magnifying power of the objective given 10 so 1 plus it will be 25 what is the focal length of this is what they are asking this is what they are asking they are given total magnifying power value given no so total magnifying power value is given okay now what is the total magnifying power value is given it's 100 let me put here 100 100 equals to 100 equals to what is here it will be 10 1 plus 25 divided by fe so it will be 10 here so one if consider it will be 9 is equals to 25 by fe so it will be what so fe is equals to 25 by 9 so this will be focal length of eyepiece this is correct answer. got my point okay now let me move to the next one okay see it next one the refractive index of a prism of monochromatic wave is given this refractive index of prism for monochromatic is given what root 2 done okay now and its refracting angle of that prism refracting angle you know it angle between the two refracting surface will be, will be called it is refracting angle it will be what 60 degree for minimum deviation the angle of incidence will be they are asking angle of incidence for minimum deviation you know already for minimum deviation what is the formula for uh, can I go with uh, for minimum deviation? Can I use I, I a equals to two r? A equals to two r. Hopefully, you are very comfortable with this formula in case of minimum deviation. So they are given angle of prism. It will be sixty degree is equals to two r. Therefore, r is equals to what thirty degree. R is equals to what thirty degree. Now we are asked to find i. No, therefore you apply Snell's law for one surface. So this is like that. So this is. Already this is R, we have found it. This is their asking. I value they're asking. So it will be sine of I is equals to sine R. What is the sine R value? It will be 30 degree. And refractive index of this medium will be what? Root 2. So sine I is equals to sine 30 is 1 by 2 into root 2. So is it 1 by root 2? So sine I equals to what? 1 by root 2. Therefore, I is equals to what? 45 degree. What is the value of i? It will be 45 degree. Therefore, this will be answer. Done? Okay. Go to the next one. Okay. Now, see here. Okay. In compound microscope, the cross wire, cross wires are fixed at the point where the image is formed by the objective, where the image is formed by the eyepiece. Okay. Let me tell you. So in case of compound microscope, in case of compound microscope, this is objective, this is eyepiece. Somewhere the image formed by objective is somewhere here, right or not? So take uh, one reference here, where would be the image? So this is like the ray going through optic center will not deviate. The ray going through, this is the image found by, let this be A and B, it is the image found by objective so let me take this is there any like like this will be a ray predictable ray no so i'll take it to decide where would be the image so if you keep your eye if you keep your eye and observe it 
So this is appears to be somewhere here. Somewhere here. It means the let this be what a dash and this be what b dash. So what here? Actually, we focus the cross wire in this. We focus the cross wire. Cross wire is like something like that to focus it to the image. We focus it on the object image found by objective. Then automatically in the same direction we get image. So we actually we are focusing this. This is the image found by objective. Then automatically the rays will come as if the rays from this AB come as if they appear to come from A double dash, A dash and B dash. From this the image, uh, I mean this would be image. If I look through AB, I'll find it A dash and B dash. This image I'll find it. So what we can say that we are cross wire of the uh, compound microscope. We will. Uh, fix towards the image found by the objective then automatically we sense the total final image so where the image formed by so where is the cross wire we will uh, focus on where the image formed by the okay where the image formed by the objective i'll go with this right or not image found by the object done let me move on to the next one okay okay now i'll have one more now let me take it okay Okay, one more, one more. We'll go with the prisms now. Some more questions on prism, right? And that given question paper, discussion paper, we 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 find uh, some telescope problems more. So to compensate that, we will take some more. In maybe this uh, is not there in your uh, discussion paper. Plus, uh, I have given any questions will be there here. Just to glance the question here. See here. Let me move on now. Okay, let me go to, okay, see here. In this question, the angle of minimum deviation for the prism, angle of minimum deviation for the prism of refractive index. What is the refractive index of the prism given? 1.5 equal to angle of the prism. The angle of minimum deviation for the prism equal to, equal to what? Angle of prism, it means angle of minimum deviation they only given equal to angle of prism whose uh, refractive index is 1.5 the angle the angle of prism is they are asking angle of prism only okay now let me use here this uh, you know already refractive index is equals to what is the formula for refractive index in minimum deviation condition it will be sine of delta minimum plus a divided by 2 whole divided by sine of a by 2 we know it. Minimum deviation is equal to A. So I will substitute here. Then what we will get here? Refractive index is equal to here it will be A no? A plus A will be what? 2A. 2A by A, 2 will be. Therefore can I write here sin A only? Divided by. Is it sin A by 2? Sin of A by 2. Right or not? Therefore I will move on now. Got this? Okay. Mu is equal to can I write this sin A as 2 times A by 2 also? Is as good as it is sine a only divided by sine of a by 2. So can I apply here sine 2a formula? Sine 2a will be what? 2 sine a, 2 sine a cos a divided by what? Sine of a by 2. Got my point? So what is here cancels here? This cancels with this one. Then what is remaining? Is equals to 2 times cos of a by 2. So what is the mu value given? 1.5. Then can I substitute their mu value? 1.5 is equals to, can I write 1.5 as, okay, let it be. Can I write directly 1.5 as like that also? Okay, see here. 1.5 can I write 3 by 2 is equals to cos of a by 2. Is it visible? Okay, done. Now, okay. 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 See here. Done. Now here. Can I? What is this? Three by two can be written. What? What is three by two? Okay. Three by two is done. And this two, if you take here, it will be two like that. 
this is 1.5 no 1.5 this two if i take here is it into 2 also can this will be 3 by 4 is equal to cos of a by 2 what is 3 by 4 is 3 by 4 is definitely 4 uh, point like uh, what should be here uh, 4 7 uh, something 4 7 and uh, 5 sorry 5 okay 5 something okay no 5 is equals to what cos of a by 2 so 0.75 already hopefully they are given here the given value the given value 0 0.75 value will be of what 0 0.75 they are given no here they are given no 0 0.75 will be value of what cos 45 cos 41 degree no then can i take in place of cos 41 so what should be answer then therefore a by 2 is equals to 41 then what should be a equals to is it 82 degree is it 82 degree definitely so definitely i'll go with this answer am i right what should be angle of prism 82 degree done okay now let me move on to the next one now see the next question here okay now see here if the refractive index of uh, indices of crown glass for red uh, yellow violet colors are given this is a refractive index for red color. This is a refractive index of yellow and then this is a refractive index of violet. Done? Now let me write. For crown glass, let me write it like that. Refractive index. Okay, let me write here for refractive index. For crown, let me take one subscript. What is here for uh, red? Okay, red one I'll use for crown glass. What is given here? It will be given what? 1.5, sorry, 1.5, 1. 4, 0. This will be refractive index of crown glass for red and refractive index of crown glass for the yellow will be what? For the yellow will be what? 1.5170. Then refractive index of the another is what? You know, uh, violet. Violet for crown glass will be what? 1.5318. This value given here, right or not? And for flint glass also the corresponding values are also given for flint glass. So refractive index of red for flint glass, let me take two here. So that will be what 1.64, that will be what 1.64 and uh, it will be 3.4. And refractive index of yellow for flint glass, it will be given what 1.6499. So another value for refractive index of violet for flint glass, it will be given what 1.6852. So, by giving all these things, they are asking what dispersive power of crown and flint glasses will be. Okay. Now, so for that, we will have a formula. What is the dispersive power formula? Dispersive power for a given prism is equals to angular dispersion divided by mean deviation. You know it already. Angular dispersion divided by mean deviation. If you do so, let me write it for uh, first crown glass. It will be n. Let me write n v1 minus n r1 divided by mean refractive index of mean color. So this is the formula for dispersive power of prism. Let us write now here. Dispersive power of prism is equals to what is the n v1 value for this? Uh, it will be what 1.5170 minus and r1 will be what 1.5140 divided by for yellow will be what it will be 1.5170 minus 1 so if such a data is given in neat you have to go something like uh, logically so like let me tell you see here omega 1 is equals to just to subtract it so 1.510 1 point okay for v1 what is the value of this v1 okay not taken right 1.5318 no right this will be what one point 5318 done okay so one point done just a minute okay let it done okay now let me take this once again let me write here okay no okay that is what is over nr1 here nv1 i written uh, okay this is one point Probably I written right. No, no. Let me write once again. See carefully. Look. What is NV1 here? One point. What is NV1? 
वन पॉइंट फाइव थ्री वन एट गॉट मई पॉइंट देन एन आर वन इज वॉट वन पॉइंट माइनस वन पॉइंट फाइव वन फोर जीरो डिवाइड बाय सो मीन डी वे मीन डिफ्रैक्ट इंडेक्स विल बी वॉट वन पॉइंट फाइव वन सेवन जीरो माइनस वन नाउ लेट मी गो हियर सी हियर हियर एट माइनस जीरो इज एट नो ओके एट now 1 minus 4 you cannot know you take from here 11 minus 4 will be what it will be 7 now here you are taken one no it will be what so here it will be 2 2 minus 1 will be what 1 so 5 minus 5 is 0 then 0.0 point zero you will get like that in numerator in denominator what you will get see here it will be 0.5170 it will be what 0.5170 just to approximate see carefully Here zero is there, no? Just to write zero like that. Five ones are five threes are something you are getting, no? Five threes are fifteen. Five threes are no something. So look at the options. If options are very close to each other, then that is different. Like some such cases will not be given. So options if slightly scattered away, this approximation will comes into play very much. You know something zero point zero three omega one will be something like that. Find out the omega two. So in the same manner. Let me find out the omega two. Something like zero point zero three. We'll keep it in mind. For omega two, it will be what? N V two minus one point six eight five two minus. It will be what? One point six four three four divided by what? This will be one minus. Can I write directly? This formula I'm using. This minus one will be what? This minus one will be what? Zero point six four nine nine. So here what? The answer will be what here? Two minus four, you cannot. Twelve minus four will be eight here. Two minus four, you cannot. No, twelve. You have taken one from here. Four minus three, it will be one here. Then it will be what? Eight minus four, it will be four here. Got my point? It will be six minus six, zero, and it is zero. So in denominator, you are getting zero point six, zero point six four nine nine. Got my point? Something like that you are getting. Now again, go logically. This here six point zero point six four. Like, can I write here? Zero is there. Let me write zero here. So forty one six how much? Six six ah for thirty six no something like that six six ah got my point something like that you may use this technique in NEET to approximate if options are more scattered away this will be very helpful so omega will be something zero point zero three and omega two will be something zero point zero six then definitely I'll go with this got my point this is the dispersive power of the two prisms let me move on now okay next one. Okay, the minimum deviation produced by the hollow prism filled with certain liquid. One prism, we are filled with liquid. We are filled with certain liquid. Is found to be the minimum deviation produced by hollow is found to be how much? Thirty degree. So minimum deviation will be how much? Thirty degree here. The light ray also found to be refracted at an angle of thirty degree. The angle, you know, see here, the refracted at an angle of how much? Thirty degree. The ray going from here, it will bend here. So, what is the angle of refraction they are given? This value is given. What is the angle of refraction is given? The angle of refraction will be found to be thirty degree. They only given here. Then the refractive index of the liquid is. They are asking refractive index of liquid is. Got my point? Okay. Now, so we will have a formula. They are given R value. They are talking about minimum deviation. They are talking about minimum deviation. Can we use this formula? A is equals to two R. So they are given R value. Therefore, angle of prism will come out to be how much? Two into thirty. So is it sixty degree here? Angle of prism will be what? Sixty degree. Then now we can go easily refractive index of the prism. Very easily, you know, with the help of this formula, sine of what? Delta minimum plus a by two whole divided by what? Sine of a by two. We know a value. We know, you know, delta minimum value also. It is given here. This is a delta minimum also. Can you substitute? Can you go for it? Okay. If you hopefully this, uh, you can do it. No problem. So if you do it, you will get refractive index of that liquid comes out to be root two. Done. Okay. Now let me move on. Next one. So here, a ray passes through prism of angle. A ray passes through prism of angle. What is the prism angle? Prism angle of prism here, sixty degree. In minimum deviation position, it means the prism position will be in minimum deviation position and suffers a deviation of overall. So overall deviation will be what? One ray comes here, it goes here, it goes here. With respect to incident, overall deviation will be how much they are given? 
overall deviation will be what? It will be what? 30 degree. Then what is the angle of incidence on the prism? They are asking here. So this is what? Angle of incidence. They are asking this angle of incidence. Done. So you are given deviation value and uh, this you know angle of prism also given. And they are talking about minimum deviation. Then uh, we can get this R value also using the formula same A equals to 2R. So what is the value of A is given 60 degree. So divided by 2 is equals to R. Therefore, what is R value? It will be what? 30 degree. R value will be 30 degree. Now, they are given deviation. That told no? the minimum deviation of position and suffers a deviation of OK. Then they are given actually minimum deviation position. Then, then what is the angle of incidence they are asking? Then, so what is the formula for uh, the minimum deviation position formula? It will be 2i minus a, no? Now, even I think r is also not necessary. They are asking i, no? What is the minimum deviation 30 degree? It will be 2 into i minus a value will be what directly you go with. So it will be what? 60 you bring here. 60 comes here, it will be 90 is equals to 2i. Therefore, what is i? i equals to 45 degree. i equals to how much? 45 degree. Right? i value will be 45 degree. Done. Now let me go to the next one. Okay. See here. Next one. Done. If the refractive index of material of the equilateral prism, the name equilateral given means what? The angle at all the vertices will be what? 60 degree. Therefore, angle of prism will be 60 degree. So, refractive index of prism material is given how much? Root 3. Then the angle of minimum deviation of the prism is. They are asking angle of minimum deviation. Angle of minimum deviation. Done. Okay. Now, can, can you go with this formula? Mu is equals to sine of. Okay. Delta plus 60 by 2 divided by what? Sine 30. Because sine A by 2 you have to take, no? So, mu value is given root 3 is equals to. So, it will be sine of delta plus 60 by 2. So, it will be what? Sine 30, no? It will be 1 by 2. Right or not? 1 by 2. So, what should be the next thing here? Sine of delta plus 60 by 2. Okay, is equals to, can you bring here 2, can that 2, 2 will be here? Then what is the value, which, which sign, sign value it is? 60 degree. Therefore, delta plus 60 by 2 is equals to 60 degree. Therefore, delta is equals to 120 degree minus 60 degree. Is this 60 degree here? So what is the deviation here? 60 degree. So that will be here, 60. Done? Okay, next. Okay, next. The angle of prism is 5 degree. The angle of prism 5 degree means they are talking about thin prism. They are talking about thin prism. They are talking about thin prism. And its refractive index for red and violet colors are given. Refractive index of red color is given what? 1.5. And refractive index of prism medium for violet color will be given what? 1.6. The angular dispersion produced by the prism is... Okay, you know already angular dispersion is what? The angle between the two extreme colors, red and violet. So what is the angular dispersion formula? Nv minus Nr into A. Nv minus Nr into A. Therefore, angular dispersion is equal to, what is Nv value? 1.6, 1.5, then angle of prism is 5 degree. Therefore, theta is equal to what? 0.1 into 5 degree. Is that theta is equal to 0.5 degree? Got my point? Theta equals to 0.5 degree. So the answer will be this. Done. Now a ray of a ray incident 15 degree on one of the refracting surface. We got prism here. The light ray hit with what angle of incidence here? This angle of incidence how much here? 15 degree on refracting surface. 15 degree. Then angle of prism will be given how much? Angle of prism will be given how much? 60 degree. Suffers a deviation of, okay, light ray goes like that and finally comes like that. Deviation of 50 degree. What is overall deviation they are given it is? Overall deviation is how much? This deviation will be 55 degree. Got my point? 55 degree. What is the angle of emergence? Now draw a normal here also. This is what? Angle of emergence. They are asking angle of emergence. 
so they are not telling this about this prism is in minimum deviation position better we will take this formula i plus angle of emergence minus e right or not okay deviation is given how much 55 degree so i is what 15 degree they have given plus e minus a is what given 60 degree right or not therefore no so this 15 60 minus 50 will be minus 45 no minus 60 plus 15 will be minus 45 so you take that side am i right or not okay then 55 plus 45 how much it will be it will be what 60 plus is it uh, 100 what is your answer will be see if I, this is 60 is it 100 is there any option in the 100 100 option is there here no therefore i will go with none of the above none of these got my point okay now next dispersion of light is due to next question let me go with dispersion of light is due to so you know already in any medium it may be prism medium or any optical medium if the light ray goes so it will deviate into different directions that deviation is according to Cauchy's formula so whichever I got high refractive index its bending is less whichever I got low refractive index so any wavelength for which refractive index is low it will be bending low so you know even in the case of prism prism if you take a white light so you will find it different colors bending so with that refractive index you know wavelength for red is more refractive index for that will be less so it will be red here it will be violet here so so likewise dispersion takes place due to different in wavelength different due to different in wavelength got my point so definitely here this wavelength is more for red no so refractive index for red will be less got my point so actually dispersion of light is not actually a prism property or any shape property it's actually a property of nature of medium right or not so you know depending on nature of medium that dispersion is different it may be prism it may be lens or it may be just a slab there will be a, inside the material inside the material there will be you know uh, the, definitely there is a spread i mean dispersion happens that is purely property of nature of medium so that, that is different for different wavelength so dispersion of light is due to wavelength for different wavelength there will be different bending got my point Disper different dispersion okay done so these questions will be from prism then hope some more questions from your side some different different uh, go for it on the same type you don't go like different diversity in the problems you choose it and do good it in the tomorrow's exam all the best for tomorrow's exam thank you